not like your shirt. I know. Is your dad a really lucky shirt? Green is my favorite color. Here out there? Yeah. You're in the back. Raise your hands if you can hear. I know I can hear you. Come I know on. you can hear. You guys can come up closer. We're building community today. Let's all get together. Yeah. All right, well thanks for coming. I'm trying to figure out this technology. Got the mic too hot. Got the mic too hot. I mean, right, we're gonna try to figure this out. Folks here, raise your hand in the back if you can hear me. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. okay, well, it's uh, so amazing to be here. It's great to see all of you out here. Uh, who's, who's feeling fired up right now? <laughs> well, uh, my name is Ben Duncan. I'm uh, the board chair of Vocal Environmental Justice Oregon. Uh, and I really want to welcome you to the Rally for the Ride. Uh, today's a Rally for the Bus. Uh, today's a symbolic day. Not only marks TriMed's decision to raise fares and cut services in our communities, but it also marks the day that we, together as a group and as a community, come here to raise our voices. To speak out for fairness, for equity, and for justice. Hope is leading this effort because we see transportation as a right. It's what brings us to our jobs to our medical services, to our family and friends, to our food and our cultural and religious spaces. It connects us to each other. Today is symbolic because today we are connecting to each other in a new way and beginning our journey together. Today we are connected by our desire to see that in Portland, seen throughout this nation as a model of transportation and policy planning, that this model and reputation serves all Portlanders, particularly those that are dependent on this transportation system, yeah. and particularly those that are most disproportionately impacted by the service cuts and fare increases. Amen. Today, we will no longer accept a transportation system that is not fair and equitable. Today, we will not accept a transportation system that does not serve our most vulnerable community members. We will no longer support a system where decisions are made not by how well they will affect our community members, but how well they will serve as photo opportunities for our elected officials. Yeah. At the same time, we will acknowledge and support those in TriMet on the board who continue to focus uh, service as a number one agency priority. Today we're here to build a community of voices. It is a great opportunity that we strive to shape a system that works for all of us. A system where bus rider voices are heard. A system that we can all be proud of. Today is a symbolic day. We come together as one voice for equity and for justice. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you for supporting Opal Bus Riders Unite. And thank you for standing here in solidarity. Now today, of course, is about the riders' voices the voices of the bus riders in our community. It's my pleasure now to introduce our co-director of Opal, Joseph Santos Lyons, who will introduce the rest of our speakers. Thanks. Do you love the bus? Yeah. Do you guys love the bus? Yeah. 
Thanks so much, Ben Duncan, the board chair for Opal Environmental Justice Oregon. So I'm Joseph Santos Lyons. I'm one of the co-directors here at Opal. So I want to introduce our first speaker today, Shannon Olive, who's Opal's lead bus organizer. She's depended on public transportation for much of her life. She grew up here in North Northeast Portland in the African American community and has lived through racism, classism, and gentrification. And today, Shannon is passionate about her community and works to make change together. Please join me in welcoming Shannon Olive. Good afternoon, Portland. Good afternoon, bus riders. And I don't want to leave the youth out. Good afternoon, you. Got my son over here, Jeffrey. So my name is Shannon, and I am the lead bus organizer for OPAL, organizing people, activating leaders. And OPAL is a community-based grassroots organizations that educate, engage, and empower low-income communities of excuse me communities of color around environmental justice. Environmental justice is the right to a decent quality of life for all of us, regardless of our income, regardless of our culture, and regardless of our race. In every environment that we live in, we should have access to clean air, fresh water, and a healthy neighborhood. You guys look so beautiful out there. You guys look really beautiful. It's an honor to be standing here in front of you on this day, because this is the day we have all been waiting for. Look around you. Just take a minute to look around you. Do you know the next person to you? Next person that's standing next to you? Well, let's just take a moment to just I want everybody to just go to two people and give them a hug and tell them thanks for being here. So today, we are here together fighting against the same issue that will cause the impact on our lives. Is that right? How many people here today are sick and tired of being sick and tired? in the service cut no. and try that adjusting time on our buses? No. Are we tired of overcrowded buses? No. Are we tired of long waits? No. Are we tired of buses passing us by? No. Are we tired of no bus shelters? No, no stop IDs? No. Dirty and dangerous bus stops? No. Well, you know what? I'm tired too. How many people out there are ready for a change? No. How many people know and our voices should be heard on any issues that is impacting our life and our children's lives today. Yeah. Is this our community? Yeah. Is this our community? Yeah. Well, let's take our community back and do what we need to do. Yeah. Enough is enough because we do need the bus. Yeah. Enough is enough because we do need the bus. So there is power here today, you guys. There is energy here today. And guess what? There is love here today. And you know why I say there's love here? Because we are all here representing ourselves, we're representing our family, we're representing our children, and last but not least, we are representing our community, which we love. Is that right? Yeah. Every single person I have talked to on the buses, at the bus stops, at the MAC stations, on the MACs, at the workforce centers, at the school, and last but not least, at our Bus Riders Unite meeting, I have said to them, the more power, the more people, the more power we have to make change. Yeah. Are you guys ready for a change? Yeah. Are we demanding a fair transit system? Yeah. Are we demanding for more reliable and affordable buses? Yeah. Are we here today to have our voices to be heard? Yeah. This is not something that we want. This is something that we need. Am I right? And then we're going to say it together. So we're going to say, stop the fare increase, stop the service cuts, and then I'm going to say, give us what we need, and you're going to say, more buses. And then I'll say, give us what we need, and you're going to say, a fair transit system. And we're going to say it two times. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Here we go. Stop the fare increase. Stop the service cuts. Give us what we need. More give us what we need. More stop the fare increase. Give us what we need. More Give us what we need. A fair transit system. So I want to thank you all for coming out today and again representing our communities. I truly appreciate you.
appreciate your effort. I truly appreciate your courage. And I truly appreciate the power that you have brought here today. And most of all, I truly appreciate your voice. So come join us today at Opal. Our booth is over there to the right. And let's ride together. If you don't get involved today, you can't complain tomorrow. I love you all and thanks. Each of you has a stake in helping make and win affordable and reliable public transportation. Each of you has an opportunity to make a difference, as Shannon was saying, not only by being here today, but by also considering becoming a member of OPAL. So we do encourage you to check out our table or talk to one of our volunteers before you leave today. So our next speaker, Nancy, is an emerging bus rider leader with OPAL's Bus Riders Unite. She's a home health care nurse who works the night shift and takes TriMet to homes across the region, from East Multnomah County to Clackamas County to Washington County. Nancy is active in her Gresham Neighborhood Association and recently spoke about the, the impact of the fare increase and service cuts on her life at Metro East Community Media. Please welcome Nancy Edmison. I've lived in Oregon over 30 years, and most of them in the Portland metro area. I've been using TriMet for a long time. Thank you. Come closer. <laughs> I'm a little old lady. Give me a break. <laughs> I don't drive, so TriMet is very important to me. It's how I get around. I'm a nurse, and this is how I get to work. No matter the time of day or night, no matter the weather, during the ice snowstorms, I got to work when even the mail didn't get delivered. I've been praised by employers for getting to my patients when other nurses couldn't. To do this, I have to leave home one and a half to two hours before my shift starts. Every night, with service cuts, that could increase. TriMet gets me nearly everywhere work, doctors, grocery shopping, and sometimes play. I've, had, I've even used it to get to school sometimes. The fare increases hurt people, but especially the service cuts. The people making these decisions don't use the system that they're doing this to. They aren't asking us, the people, who depend on it. Why is that? We'd supply them with common sense, and we won't charge you for it either. Yeah. <laughs> Opal Bus Riders Unite is the voice we need. We're all busy and can't get to the TriMet board meetings. Where are they? When? Opal gets to them and lets us know what they are doing and thinking. The problem is, the TriMet board is not talking to us, the people. They make decisions first and then are telling us what they are going to do. This is regardless of how it affects us. Opal gives us clout. Organization. Come and join us and be hard! Yeah. Yeah.